writing a conclusion. Oftentimes, one of the hardest things to do as a writer. How do I end my writing? How do I make it feel complete? Here, there's some strategies for writing a conclusion. Conclusions are often the most difficult part to write in any piece. Many writers feel that they have nothing left to say and they just want to stop and be done. A writer needs to keep in mind that the conclusion is often what the, a reader will remember the best. Your conclusion should be the best part of your paper. After all, your reader is parting ways and you want them to feel good or complete when they do. Good authors will leave you wanting more. Good authors will also leave you feel complete inside after reading their story. So these are some things that a conclusion should do. After I finish reading this, I want you to pause and I want you to go look at your paper. Look at your conclusion. Did you do one of these three things? A conclusion should stress the importance of the th thesis statement, which is also your topic of your story. It should give the paper a sense of completeness. Leave that reader feeling good and whole like they read something and it's finished. Or leave a final impression on your reader. These three things your conclusion should be doing. So pause the, the presentation and go and check your conclusion. Now that you're back, we're going to talk about some suggestions on how to write a conclusion. These four things, four bullets, are ways in which you can write a decent conclusion. So again, after we talk about these four, I want you to think about and push pause and look at your conclusion again. Did I do one of these four things? If I didn't, how can I change it? How can I make my conclusion better? So one option you can do is answer the question, so what? So what that means is you show your readers why this paper was important. Show them that your paper was meaningful and useful. So what? So what I learned was this, etc. Synthesize, don't summarize. Now that's different because oftentimes we've heard people say, what's a conclusion? Oh, you just summarize what the introduction was or reword the introduction. Not always. What you want to do is you don't want to repeat things that were in your paper. They've already read that. Show them how the points you made in the paper and the support and examples you used were not random but fit together. You take all the information that you talked about in your story, your essay, your paper, and you put them together. It's like a puzzle. Put the pieces of the puzzle together and then show them the end result. Redirect your readers. Give your readers something to think about. Leave them hanging. Leave them wanting more. Perhaps a way to use your paper in the real world might be an option. If your introduction went from general to specific, make your conclusion go from specific to general. Now, this is often hard when you're writing a narrative. Narratives don't often connect to the real world. But if you're writing a nonfiction paper, this would be an option. And then the last one is create new meaning. You don't have to give new information to create new meaning. By demonstrating how your ideas work together, you can create new, a new picture. Often the sum of the paper is worth more than its parts. So you pull everything together again and you turn it into something new, a different idea. Now push pause, go look at your paper, look at your conclusion. Did you use one of these strategies? Returning. I'm going to take and show you some of those strategies. And here are they are. You can echo the introduction. So echoing your introduction can be a good strategy if it is meant to bring the reader a reader full circle, meaning start, wrap around and finish. What you can do is begin by describing a scenario. You can end with the same scenario as proof that your essay or your paper did what it was supposed to do. Here's an example. From the parking lot, I could see the towers of, of the castle of the Magic Kingdom standing st stately against the blue sky. To the right, the tall peak of the Matterhorn rose even higher. From the left, I could hear the jungle sounds of Adventureland. As I entered the gate, Main Street stretched before me with its quaint shops evoking an old-fashioned small town so charming it could never ex have existed. I was entranced. 
Disneyland may have been built for children, but it brings out the child in adults. So that was an in introduction. And as you can see, this author used quite the list of uh, w advanced words and describing details, sensory details. Um, moving down to the conclusion, so again, this is echoing the introduction. I thought I would spend a few hours at Disneyland, but here I was at 1 a.m., closing time, leaving the front gates with the now dark towers of the Magic Kingdom behind me. I could see tired children toddling along and struggling to keep their eyes open as best they could. Others slept in their parents' arms as we waited for the parking lot tram that would take us to our cars. My 40-year-old feet ached, and I felt a bit sad to think that in a couple of days I'd be leaving California, my vacation over, to go back to my desk. But then I smiled to think that for at least a day, I felt 10 years old again. Now, that right there echoes what they talked about in the beginning, but it does a character action, a character internal thought. So like our introduction strategies before, you can have an internal dialogue thought, but you can also end that way as well. Another one is to challenge the reader. Challenge the reader by issuing a challenge to them, helping them redirect the information in the paper. Though serving on a jury is not only a civic responsibility, but also an interesting experience, many people still view jury duty as a chore that interrupts their jobs and routine of their daily lives. However, juries are a part of America's attempt to be a free and just society. Thus, jury duty challenges us to be interested and responsible citizens. Now that is going saying, all right, jury duty is boring, but they challenge you to think about, okay, but with this, it's our attempt to be a free nation. So that's a challenge. Another one is looking to the future. Looking to the future emphasizes the importance of your paper and redi can redirect the reader's thought process. It may help them apply the new information to their lives. So this one right here is going to have the reader look to the future of the, what they just talked about. Without well-qualified teachers, schools are little more than buildings and equipment. If higher paying careers continue to attract the best and the brightest students, there will not only be a shortage of teachers, but the teachers available may not have the best qualifications. Our youth will suffer, and when youth suffers, the future suffers. So it's leaving them, it wants them to think about, okay, what can we do? We want our teachers to be here, so it's leaving them to think about looking to the future and what can happen. And the last one is posing questions. This is often what I've seen you guys use as well. You ask a question to the reader, make them think about it, and wanting more, or leave them curious with the question you ask. Campaign advertisements should help us understand the candidate's qualifications and positions on the issues. Instead, most tell us what a, a boob or a knave opposing candidate is, or they present general images of the candidate as a family person or God-fearing American. Do such advertisements contribute to the creating an informed electoral or a people who choose political leaders the same way they choose soft drinks or soap. Now that question, that, that's obviously a little bit above where our thinking level is because we don't often think about uh, politics, but this is the writer leaving you with a question. How do you choose who you vote for? So with your conclusion, Think about, how did I end my paper? Did I do the job I wanted to do?